So today we are checking out some budget anamorphic lenses from Siri. Siri, I have no idea how to say that, but they tend to launch their lenses on Indiegogo and they crush it on there. Cause this first 50 mil, I think they were trying to get a hundred thousand bucks and they got over a million. Then they launched this 35 mil and that got almost 2 million. They just launched a 24. So that's great. Now there's actually a set 24, 35, 50. So let's see how epic our lens looks while Dylan tells us about our sponsor Storyblocks. In a world where your masterpiece is almost complete, but you forgot to get that one shot of B-roll, there's only one place you can turn, and that's to shoot it again. That's too expensive and is a pain in the butt. So instead, go to Storyblocks. There you will find over a million royalty-free stock assets, videos, music, sound effects, and even graphic templates. If you don't think this shot has enough anamorphic lens flares, Storyblocks' extensive library has all the flares you'll need to fulfill your heart's deepest desires. Anamorphic lens flares in space? No problem. How about a wedding video? Sure, why not? Your mom's birthday? Now that's what I call epic. Happy birthday, mom. The unlimited all-access plan means that for just one affordable subscription, you can get all the lens flares you want. And I mean all of them for either personal or commercial use. Click the link in the description and get your Storyblocks account today. What'd you guys think? You made Dylan look like a mega star. Dude, you look like a Filipino Vin Diesel. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> All we did was take this flashlight and shined it at the lens. And this is a normal lens, so this is a typical lens flare. But you know, with an anamorphic lens, it's like whoosh. By the way, thanks to Storyblocks, we're giving away this 50 mil anamorphic lens. What do they have to do to win giveaway, boy? Share an embarrassing story in the comments. Oh, that's gonna be funny. And it has to be a true story. Also, you do have to have an E-mount camera because this is an E-mount lens. Now, there's a few things that make shooting anamorphic very appealing. The most obvious is the lens flares. You notice them right away. But two, you get that ultra widescreen look. And sure, you could just take a frame like this and just slice off the top and bottom or letterboxing it, which is where you put those matte black bars on the top and bottom. But the problem with just slicing that off is you're just cutting out extra resolution and also so you're losing field of view. And there's also just a cinematic quality about it that's pretty tough to describe, but you definitely feel it. And for example, the bokeh in the background, instead of a perfect circle, usually you end up with an oval. Now this lens isn't quite full frame, it's APS-C. So when you attach it to a camera like this A7S III, which is full frame, you'll notice that the edges get cut off. Now I could jump into the Super 35 mode and that'll clear that area. Downside is that this camera can only do that mode in just HD instead of 4K. So instead I could go to the clear image zoom and right around 1.3 to 1.4 is where I clear it. So now I can still shoot 4K with this lens. So now that we're familiar with this lens, let's go and shoot something cool. Fake walk away. All right, so now that I've had a couple days with this lens, I think it's nice and sharp. It's definitely fun and the footage you can get with it is really cool, but there is one major issue that I have with it. So because of that, I personally probably would never use it on a professional project. This is a 1.33X anamorphic. So basically that means horizontally, the image gets squeezed onto the sensor. Now I just have to tell Adobe Premiere that this is a 1.33X anamorphic and then it'll de-squeeze the image. Everything comes back to the normal proportions and we get a nice super widescreen. But take a look at this close-up of Steve here. It's definitely way overstretched, even though I put in everything correctly. And it becomes very obvious once you put it next to my spherical cine lens, right? So then I was thinking, okay, maybe this actually isn't a 1.33. Maybe it's closer to a 1.3 or maybe 1.25. So I de-squeezed it slightly less and now everything looks better Even if I put Steve in the edges everything looks nice and proportional again kind of annoying But whatever I just applied that scale to all the clips But then half of the clips seemed like it was too squished in all of a sudden So now I'm scratching my head thinking why 
is this happening? What I then realized is that when you pull your focus to a close up, it squeezes it less. So when you stretch it back out, it overstretches everything. So basically the amount of squeeze that this lens gives you is very inconsistent and it depends on where you're focused. So every shot you do, you might have to slightly tweak the amount you de-squeeze it. I mean, for the most part, I only really notice it when it's in the first 10 feet or so, but I guess that's why these lenses are seven, 800 bucks opposed to 5,000, 10,000, or you know, the high end ones are 50 grand a pop. There's a few other technical things like inconsistent white balance and some vignetting around the edges and stuff like that. But I can get over all that because, you know, this is a budget lens. The biggest turnoff for me is definitely that it's not a consistent 1.33x. You might also notice that you can't get a great macro shot with these lenses, but that's more of an anamorphic thing rather than this lens in particular. You can always get a diopter, slap that up front for those macro shots. Now, this is as close as I can get to Steve on these two lenses. You can definitely get a close up, but that's about it. To put that into perspective, this is how close my cine lenses can get. Now I do appreciate that these do open up to f1.8. So when it got dark, it was no problem. I just opened up and I also like that it didn't flare up like crazy, really only when the motorcycle headlights went straight into the lens, which was really cool. Now they open up to f1.8, which is great, but they only close down to f16. So if you're shooting in bright daylight, make sure you bring some ND filters. There's some threads on the front so you can just rotate them on. I've been avoiding handheld because there is no stabilization in this lens. Now, if it's a bigger camera, it's not gonna shake as much so that's not a big deal or I could also try turning on IBIS but still it's not gonna be nearly as stable as a lens with image stabilization built in oh that looks epic gimbals are of course gonna give you some pretty good results but it is tricky running a manual lens on a gimbal now the 35 mil actually comes with these lens gears that you can just slide onto here which is real nice especially for times like this now I can go ahead and control the focus from here oh this is where it's at this video should just be titled making Dylan look epic. I gotta get the sun in the back to get that lens flare. Oh, epic, epic. You're totally gonna wanna screen grab this for your Tinder. Oh yeah. Now one thing you really wanna watch out for is to make sure that your camera stays nice and level, especially if there's any flares in the frame. Cause usually you could just punch in, rotate a little bit, fix the problem, right? But if there's a flare, when you fix it like that, it's gonna also rotate the flare. So definitely keep an eye on your level when you're shooting. Now there's also ways to fake the anamorphic look. For example, this is a true streak blue filter made by Schneider. See, if you take a close look at it, you could see those blue lines going through there, but it disappears as soon as you put it up to the lens. Actually, right now you can kind of see it still, which is not good. <laughs> Probably because we're all the way at a 16, but once you zoom in, they just kind of disappear. And if you take a light and shine it, see that? But one thing you also have to watch out for is that you don't want to rotate it the wrong way. You need it perfectly on there. I used this on a project a while back and I didn't really love it because it just tends to flare too easily. For example, if there's a blown out window, this anamorphic lens would kind of maintain that flare, but this just makes everything just go crazy. And the moment even made one for your phone, which was actually kind of fun to play with. They also made one for a drone, which I wouldn't really recommend. It just messes with the gimbal on the drone too easily. And then there was also these adapters that were kind of popular where you can just throw it on in front of any lens and it turns it anamorphic, but I hated those. I remember I was editing a project and someone delivered a bunch of footage where they had the adapter on the whole time and it was on just slightly crooked. So all the footage was skewed when I de-squeezed it. And I remember having such a headache trying to fix it so everything doesn't look all messed up. And the price of that adapter is pretty comparable to this 50 mil, so I would just much rather shoot on this. Now this A7S doesn't have an anamorphic setting, so I am looking at a squished in version on the back of the LCD, but it's only 1.33X, so I can still kind of get away with it. If it's 1.8 or 2.0, the squeeze is gonna be so intense, you're definitely gonna need a monitor correctly. You can always feed over to a monitor. This is the Cine 7, and this has anamorphic settings. A lot of the higher end monitors will do that, and also high end cameras, like the Airy, Red, Black Magic, even some Panasonic, mirrorless cameras, those have an anamorphic setting just built into the camera. So that's very convenient. But overall, I think it's really cool that we're seeing some sub $1,000 lenses come into the market. And if you're just trying to get your feet wet with some anamorphic lenses and enter that world, I think this is a great way to get started. And if you're trying to shoot some more professional project and want less of the imperfections, then definitely recommend looking into renting some of the bigger and better anamorphic lenses. But yeah, this has been really fun shooting anamorphic. I really haven't shot much anamorphic in the past. So this was really a cool experience for me, but yeah, that's all I got for this video. I am out of things to say. Uh, 